If you're using the high level CRM, you may be confused about how to set up custom forms that you can integrate on your website, on your landing pages, or in your calendars. That's exactly what I'm going to be showing you today in this video. Make sure that if you want all of the best marketing tips, high level tutorials, and Facebook and Instagram ad tips and tricks, hit this little bell button and the subscribe button to make sure that you're notified whenever a new video drops. Let's go ahead and dive in. Right now I am on the high level CRM and I am under the marketing tab. So the first thing you're going to need to do when you log in is you're going to click this drop down to get to your individual account. Then you're going to see this menu on the left-hand sidebar. We'll click on marketing and now we're going to go to form builder, which is where we are right now. If you're going to edit a form, you would just click edit, but let's go ahead and create a brand new form so I can walk you through these options. The first thing that you're going to see is just an empty space that says form 13. The first thing I'm going to do is figure out what are the fields that I actually want for this form. The first thing I'm going to do is full name. Then I'm going to drag phone number. I'm going to drag email. And maybe I want website as well as organization. So organization is another word for business name. All of these different options over here, these are the default options. If I want a special question on this form, I would need to set that up in custom fields first. Custom fields is going to be under settings and custom fields. These are all the custom fields that we have set up so that we can actually map those to individual users, contacts, and opportunities. And we can also ask them those specific questions in our forms. So let's go back up to marketing and our form builder, and we'll create this new form again. Full name, phone number, email, organization, and website. This could be something that you might use with your calendar when someone schedules a call. So if we were creating this form for our calendar, then I'm going to go to my custom fields. And this is one that we would ask, are you outside of the US? And if they are, we would typically do a Skype or a Zoom call. This is another one. Are you financially capable of investing in your business or open to using other people's money? Yes or no. This is important for our actual phone call scheduling form because this is a sales call. This isn't just free advice. We want to make sure people understand that when they're scheduling this call, we're going to be talking about paid options to work with us. And we don't want to hide that. We want to make sure that our time on our calendar is being filled with the best possible prospects. These are two examples of questions that we have added in our custom fields beforehand. So now we can add them right here. We also have another one we could add, show up. This is basically, do you agree to respect our time and show up? So this needs to be switched actually. There we go. And if you click on any of these, you can opt to have them be required fields. So all of these are going to be required fields if they're on this form. I'm making sure that I'm getting all of the information I actually need. Now, what's next? We could go over to styles. We could click on inline forms and that's gonna give us a two column layout. I particularly like that. So that's what I'm gonna leave. Show label. This is that additional label at the top. And I also like keeping that on. Then we have our background color. So we could change that color. I'm gonna leave mine white. We also have our font color. I'm gonna leave mine black. You can also do a border on this form. You can do a corner radius or you can make it square by having zero radius. And then we've also got this width. So let's do 300 and you can see that it's sh it's smaller in width but it's still going to be the same amount of questions so it really isn't something that I would encourage you to do too narrow 500 is really solid then we've got the option for agency branding I typically turn that off because my forms are always going to be embedded on another page or with my calendars so they're going to see my logo somewhere they're going to know exactly 
where they are and whose business they're excited to learn about. Now we can go to options. So this form name, I could call this calendar booking on submit. So we have the opportunity to either do a thank you message or open a URL. The truth is if I was using this for calendar booking, I don't need to do any of these things because I have a redirect URL in my calendar settings. That's gonna override any of the options on this individual form. However, if this was for anything else, I would always put a redirect URL to that next page I wanted them to land because there should always be a follow-up step. Maybe it's instructions about how they're gonna show up to the call, what information they need, or maybe it's a page that you can simply put your pixel on so that you can track how many people are submitting this form. Either way, that's always the best option for any form, any page, or any calendar. We also have our Facebook pixel ID that we can input here. I am always inputting these on a separate page. So that pixel ID is going to be on the page itself. You can still put this ID in here, but it to me isn't going to make a difference because I'm already going to have my Facebook pixel code on whatever page this form is being utilized. And then we've got Facebook pixel events. So let's say when someone submits, I want to use the submit application standard event. These are specifically for Facebook ads. Again, I could leave them completely blank because these are already going to be taken care of on my actual page pixel code and standard event code. If you're not sure how to do that and you just want to track the form individually, put in your pixel ID, which is just that number. And then you're going to say, when someone sees this form, are they a lead? And when someone submits this form, are they complete registration? Sticky contact means that if they are already in your high-level system, their contact information that you have for them is going to be auto-filled. I like doing that because if someone's already in the system, I just want them to fill out the additional options. Typically, if they're in this system, their contact information should be correct, but if you're worried that it won't be, they can still edit that. It's not going to be ineditable, but it will save them some time if you're asking several different questions. If that's everything that we want to do, we can look at all these different things again, then we're done and we're going to click integrate form. Now we have two options. We can send this link to someone that we want to fill out this form. We can use this code right here in a website, in a landing page builder to input this form on that page. You would need to have an HTML element in order to use this code. Almost every website builder or landing page builder is going to have that option. If you're using high level funnel builder or website builder, they simply have a forms element that you click on, you select your form, and you hit save. It's really that easy. I hope this has been helpful, and I've really enjoyed sharing with you all about high-level forms and the Go High Level CRM. If you have any questions on high-level or creating forms or where they can be utilized, go ahead and leave me a comment. I'd be very excited to answer that for you, and make sure that you check out our following videos on high-level CRM, as well as local marketing, Facebook and Instagram ads, and more. See you next time.